Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today I will be explaining to you our second lesson under the topic of movement into and out of the cells. In the last lesson, I described the role of water as a solvent in organisms with reference to digestion, excretion and transport. And today I will be discussing with you the second learning outcome which is understanding that energy for diffusion and osmosis comes from the kinetic energy of the random movement of molecules and ions and understanding diffusion as the net movement of molecules or ions from a region of their higher concentration to a region of their lower concentration that is down the concentration gradient as a result of their random movement. So let's start. As you all know and you must have studied in your junior classes uh, about atoms, ions and molecules that according to the kinetic model of matter all molecules whether they are solids, liquids or gases they are in a constant state of random motion. Of course the particles which are solids, the atoms, ions or molecules which are found in solids they are also moving randomly but their movement is limited because of the nature of the solid substance. Whereas if we compare the rate of movement of atoms, ions and molecules in liquids, they move at a higher speed bumping into each other and of course in gases they move at the higher speeds. Their speed can increase, this speed is because of the kinetic energy that they possess and this kinetic energy can be increased by certain factors also. For example, if we apply heat to such states of matter, to solids, to liquids or gases, then the kinetic energy of such molecules because of their random movements as they are colliding into each other will also increase. We will study diffusion in the context of the kinetic model of matter. Diffusion is actually the random movement of particles whether it is a liquid for example I have shown you a beaker of water okay a beaker which is full of millions and millions of and molecules of water so at rest also these atoms ions or molecules are randomly bumping it into each other and they are moving from here and there. So in this way they are all the time moving. Diffusion is actually the movement of atoms, ions and molecules from an area where they are in a higher concentration to an area where they are in a lower concentration. To give you an example is, just imagine that I have a bottle of perfume. Let's consider this beaker as a bottle of perfume, right? And I suddenly open the lid of the bottle of perfume. So very soon I will see that its fumes or the molecules or atoms of the you know uh, perfume they will start spreading from this region where they were in the highest concentration out of the lid to various parts of the room okay now these atoms of the perfume substance can move in any direction okay but their net rate of movement or their net movement is taking place from where they are in a higher concentration to an area where they are in a lower concentration right so as per your textbook definition you will define diffusion as movement of ions atoms and molecules from an area of a higher concentration to an area of a lower concentration now instead of using these words like from an area where they are in a higher concentration to an area where they are in a lower concentration it would be better to say that diffusion is the movement of ions, atoms and molecules down the concentration gradient. The word gradient means difference. Okay, So these molecules are moving down the concentration gradient. When I say down the concentration gradient, it actually means or it is synonymous to that they are moving from an area where the molecules are present in a higher concentration to an area where the molecules are present in a lower concentration. So let's suppose that these molecules are in a higher concentration at the top of this box right you open the lid of the box and these molecules start spreading to 
the other edge, uh, end of the box where they are in a lower concentration. So they are moving down the concentration gradient or down the concentration difference. Now students you must remember that diffusion is a kind of a process that is found in living things as well as non-living things. By the way, why are we studying this chapter or why are we studying this topic under the main topic of movement into and out of cells because we are studying biology which is the study of life and life is all about cells. We studied cells in the previous unit, right? So cells cannot function unless and until substances move into and out of the cells due to various reasons. We want substances like glucose to move into the cells because glucose will be used to produce energy. Similarly, we want substances like carbon dioxide to move out of cells because the cell wants to get rid of the excretory product. So these substances will move into and out of the cells by the process of diffusion, right? depending upon where the molecule is found in a higher concentration. For example, inside our lungs, the oxygen is in a very high concentration inside the lungs because we are constantly inhaling oxygen from the atmospheric air. Now, since the oxygen is in a higher concentration inside the lungs, so it will move from that area where oxygen is in a higher concentration to the blood capillaries that surround the alveoli, right? Because the blood capillaries that surround the alveoli, there the oxygen is in a lower concentration. So, by the principle or by the law of diffusion, the oxygen will move from a higher concentration to a place where it is in a lower concentration. Let me show this to you on a diagram. I am going to draw This is your windpipe and these two are your branches of windpipe and these are your lungs, right? Now we are constantly inhaling oxygen from the outside environment and oxygen will be entering our windpipe into our lungs. Now inside our lungs we have these grape-like clusters which are the air sacs which are loaded with oxygen. Oxygen is, a, is in a very high concentration inside the air sacs. Now, our body wants, especially our blood wants oxygen all the time and our blood will transport that oxygen to various cells and tissues of the body. So how will that blood get the oxygen from these air sacs which are loaded with oxygen through diffusion? Now every alveolus is surrounded by these blood vessels or blood capillaries, right? So by the principle of diffusion, the oxygen will move from the alveoli lots of oxygen over here it will move from the alveoli to these capillaries from the alveoli to the capillaries from the alveoli to the capillaries from the alveoli to the capillaries so all this is possible because of diffusion and remember this guys that diffusion can occur in living things and it can also occur in non-living things right now the example that i have given you is about living things and the example that i gave you of a perfume molecule or perfume atoms or ions moving from uh, one end of a room to the other end of the room this is diffusion taking place in non-living things so another example of diffusion taking place in non-living things is let's say if you have a beaker of water right and inside that beaker of water you put this beaker if is full of water and you put a drop of red ink okay you put a drop of red ink through a dropper very soon what will happen as time passes the red colored ink will start spreading from the bottom of the beaker all the way to the top and after a few hours you'll see that this color that this water is uniformly colored pink or red so this is all possible because the colored ink was in a higher concentration at the bottom of the beaker slowly and gradually the the, the colored particles started spreading from this area to an area at the top. So this is how the diffusion of this uh, non-living thing is taking place. So diffusion is very important for living things as well as for non-living things. Does diffusion take place in all states of matter? So yes. Does diffusion require energy from ATP? Does it require energy uh, does it require that energy should be synthesized in the mitochondria to power it? So the answer is no. 
because for diffusion the only thing that we need is a concentration gradient of molecules, a concentration difference of molecules. It should be there and the diffusion will take place spontaneously. With that I end today's lesson and in the next class inshallah we will be, I will be giving you more examples from living organisms regarding diffusion and I will also be discussing the factors affecting the rate of diffusion. So till the next lesson Allah Hafiz.